morning dear sisters and brothers welcome to day break every day is a precious gift of our loving god to us so we ought to thank and praise him for his infinite love for us let us now join the choir in thanking and praising him Stand strong when life changes stand strong in the ups and downs stand strong for you know that God is in control stand strong when life changes stand strong in the ups and downs stand strong for you know that God is in control the storms of life the push and pull but we are standing on the rock that never rose the storms of life the push and pull we will keep standing god is in control stand strong when life changes stand strong the ups and downs stand strong for you know that god is in control stand strong when life changes stand strong the ups and downs Stand strong for you know that God is in control Stand strong when life changes stand strong and the ups and down stand strong for you know that God is in control Stand strong when life changes stand strong the ups and downs stand strong for you know that god is in control the storms of life the push and pull we are standing on the rock that never rose the storms of life the push and pull we will keep standing god is in control stand strong when life changes stand strong and the ups and downs stand strong for you know that god is in control stand strong when life changes stand strong the ups and downs stand strong for you know that god is in control for you know that god is in control certain stories life or events of certain people convey profound lessons to us so let us tune our ears to listen to one such anecdote good morning and for our reflection this morning I'd like to take a little passage from the first letter of St. Paul to Corinthians. He talks about the Eucharist. In verse, chapter 11, verses 23 and following, St. Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Dear friends, one of the most important things that I do as a priest every day 
is to celebrate the Eucharist. For me as a priest, there can be nothing more important, there can be nothing more greater, there can be nothing more sacred than celebrate the Holy Eucharist. And every time I celebrate the Holy Eucharist, I begin to wonder and imagine this great God of ours who created the universe, who is so powerful, who is so almighty, who is everywhere, who is infinitely powerful, chooses to become finite in my hands as I lift the bread and wine. And he chooses to become the very body and blood of Christ. This, my dear friend, speaks about the greatness of God. A God who desires to become so close to us. A God who desires to become a part of us. And the only way that he can do it is by entering into our very bodies, by becoming food and drink. As Jesus says, He who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood shall never die. Imagine, my dear friends, if I, if I were to distribute thousand rupee notes for people every day, there will be crowds of people coming to collect that money. But there's something more sacred, something more precious that happens in the Eucharist. And how many of us come to the Eucharistic table? We're not receiving money, we're receiving the very body and blood of Jesus. And for me, that is the most sacred of all things. And how often we take the Lord for granted. How often we come late for Mass. How often we don't pay attention to what is happening in the Eucharist. The word that is broken for us. Or even the Eucharist that we receive. We sometimes receive in such an unworthy manner. And St. Paul warns in the letter that I read for you. That anyone who eats of, or, or partakes of, of the meal of the body and blood of Jesus in an unworthy manner, brings upon himself the very curse of God. What is the Eucharist, my dear friends? Why is it so sacred? The Second Vatican Council defines Eucharist as the source and summit of all Christian worship. It is the greatest form of worship. Why is it the greatest form of worship? Because it is not you and I who is offering this worship to God. It is Jesus himself who is offering on our behalf to God the Father. So he is not just the one who offers sacrifice. Jesus is the sacrifice. He offers himself as the sacrifice. And there can be nothing more pleasing in God's sight than the sacrifice of his only son, Jesus Christ. To summarize to you what the Eucharist is all about, it is Monday Thursday, it is Good Friday, and Holy Saturday all put together. Because that's what happens on the altar. We witness the very passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Every Eucharist is a reenactment of Christ's passion and death and resurrection. And every time we celebrate the Eucharist, we are celebrating what Jesus did for us on the cross. As John the Baptist, when he looked at Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamp of God, who takes away the sins of the world. He is the Lamp who was sacrificed for our sake to take away the sins of the world. It is by His blood that we are cleansed. And it is by His blood we enter into a new covenant which Jesus has established for us. So today and every day of your life, as you celebrate Eucharist, remember what you're participating in and participate in a worthy manner for it is the Lord whom we receive and may he nourishes us and may he strengthen us every day of our life. Amen. Certainly the anecdote you have just listened to has conveyed a message for your life. Saints were ordinary people like you and me but they had an extraordinary desire to lead a holy life. The Catholic Church has several saints. Let us now listen to the life of the saint of the day.
Today we celebrate the feast of Saint Joseph, the husband of our blessed mother Mary. The earthly father to Jesus, Saint Joseph lived his life as per God's wishes. He was the least perfect member of his household, yet God chose him to be the head of the family. He is a model for how God uses imperfect instruments to exercise his perfect will. Joseph was a compassionate, caring man. When he discovered Mary was pregnant, he resolved to send her away quietly to not expose her to shame or cruelty. However, when an angel came to Joseph in a dream, he did as the angel told him and took Mary as his wife. When the angel came again to tell him that his family was in danger, he immediately left everything he owned, all his family and friends, and fled to a strange country with his wife and the baby. He waited in Egypt without question until the angel told him it was safe to go back. Missing the child when he stayed behind in Jerusalem at the age of 12 caused both Mary and Joseph to worry. But he settled in Nazareth and worked at his carpentry trade and was able to supply his family with a decent home and living. Since Joseph does not appear in Jesus' public life, at his death or resurrection, many historians believe Joseph probably had died before Jesus entered public ministry. He lived a humble life and died with Jesus and Mary by his side. Joseph is also the patron saint of the Universal Church, families, fathers, expectant mothers, travelers, immigrants, house sellers and buyers, craftsmen, engineers and working people in general. Today, we say a special prayer to Saint Joseph. O Saint Joseph, whose protection is so great, so strong, so prompt before the throne of God, I place in you all my interests and desires. O Saint Joseph, do assist me by your powerful intercession and obtain for me from your divine Son all spiritual blessings through Jesus Christ our Lord, so that, having engaged here below your heavenly power, I may offer my thanksgiving and homage to the most loving of fathers. O Saint Joseph, I never weary of contemplating you and Jesus asleep in your arms. I dare not approach while he reposes near your heart. Press him close in my name and kiss his fine head for me and ask him to return the kiss when I draw my dying breath. Saint Joseph, patron of departing souls, pray for me. Amen. After listening to the life of the saint of the day, aren't you inspired to lead a new life of holiness? Lord, your word is indeed the light to my path. Dear sisters and brothers, let us now listen to today's Bible reflection through daily bread. Praise the Lord, dear friends, welcome to the daily bread. A daily reflection on the Word of God. As we are in the Lenten season, we are reflecting on the spirit that should be somehow kept in during the Lenten season. And for this, we are depending on the Bible passages prescribed by the Latin or right liturgy. For today's reading, we are given chapter 1 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 1 verses 10 and then 16 to 20. Also, the Gospel of Matthew 
23, 1 to 12. I read the first reading from Isaiah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Give ear to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. And then 16 to 20. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though so your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Dear friends, Lent is a time of change. Change of life. Change of attitudes. Change of convictions. The way we live. And for this, the word of God is aiding us. The reading from Isaiah. Isaiah, we know, the prince of prophets. A prophet of social justice, at the same time a prophet of holiness. We know Amos is the, called the prophet of social justice and Hosea the prophet of God's love and Isaiah the prophet of holiness. But in the first chapter, we see all this put together. God's holiness, God's demand of justice and love. So the first chapter is a sum total of the entire teaching of the 66 chapters contained in the prophet Isaiah. And here is the call, a call to conversion. First, the prophet says there is no external activities like fasting, doing penance, offering sacrifices, making pilgrimages, celebrating festivities. Nothing will help to cleanse your hearts. So now he's telling, come, hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. We know Sodom was a city destroyed by God because of sins. Gomorrah the same. So the people of Israel, the leaders of Israel are compared to the city and rulers of Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities where the fire from heaven came down and destroyed, consumed. And we are given the story in Genesis chapter 18, 19, where the Sodom was destroyed. Now the people of the leaders of Sodom and Gomorrah, because their ways are so evil, and what do they what do God, does God want? Come, change. Wash yourself. How can they wash themselves of their uncleanness? Not in the ritual washing with the water. Not by pouring of the blood of the sacrificial lamb. You have to wash your heart, not your clothes. And how do you wash? That's what God says. Wash yourselves clean. Make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings. Change your ways. Change your heart. Remove the evil of your doings, doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. And what is that? Seek justice. Correct the oppression. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. So that is what repentance means. That's what the Lent should mean. Acting justice. Compassion. Mercy and justice going together. Feed the hungry, clothe the naked, give a shelter to the shelterless. So a sharing that comes out of love, that comes out of compassion, should be the characteristic mark of the Lenten observance. So without this compassion, without this change of heart, there will be no forgiveness. So though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. There is a possibility of getting forgiveness, changing, forgetting all the past, canceling all the past debts, change. But what do we need? Be compassionate. And that's what in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23, verses 1 to 12, it said, Jesus is prescribing how one should behave, not like the Pharisees not on external activities. Listen to what they are saying, but don't do what they are doing, because they speak 
they say but don't do. You shall not be like that. You shall be doers of the word. Not only just listeners of the word, but doers of the word. And doers of the word means justice, compassion, love. So let us pray to the Lord to give us this grace to come to the need, come to help the needy, sharing with others what we have. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this call and thank you for this promise that even though our sins are so bad and so scarlet-like, he will cleanse us, he will wash us clean. Father, thank you for this great promise and also for the great act of washing ourselves clean in the blood of your Son. Also enable us to live a life of compassion, a life of justice, and a life of mercy. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope that today's Bible reflection has given you new insights and enriched you spiritually. As we come to the end of this episode of Daybreak, let us once again thank the Lord with this beautiful hymn. singing, I can hear the people praying, I can see the people dancing, a song of joy, a song of love. I can feel the nations rising, I can sense revivals coming, I can hear the Lord is coming to work in power and truth. Rise up, rise up, Rise up to your call, stand up, shout aloud, Jesus Christ is King, heaven, heaven stand, for his faith we believe in, India, rise up to your call. to 
and brothers I believe that the last half an hour has really been a blessing for you until we meet again stay blessed